Okay, so today we are looking at a line of products, particularly for receiving RF air traffic, airband VHF voice, airband VHF ADSB, which is the packetized data basically that provides information about the flight, the flight number, and you can pull up different information from that online. And then you have the uh, 1090 megahertz ADSB receivers as well. Okay, so starting over on this end and working our way up to, to this big boy here, we have a ADSB filter specifically for 1090 megahertz, 1090 megahertz. We have a VHF ADSB receiver for traditional VHF data, depending on your local community or, and, and planes you have in your area. This would be the one to get for that. And then you have a VHF airband, so listening specifically to VHF airband. All of these devices either connect directly to a computer or connect directly to a network and have onboard computer capability in the case of those larger one here. In the case of the X-Range 2, it has built-in onboard technology to run the software. You don't need a computer or anything like that. Um, you just connect it to a network, give it power, and connect it to an antenna, and it's up and running. Hey everybody, I thought it would be fun to take a look at my radar box here. We are connected to my box, at least what data I'm streaming out right now. And lower left hand corner shows how long it's been online, which is right there. And then above it is all the data packets that I'm putting out, as well as where I'm located. I'm in Cerritos, so you get some time information as well there. Nearby airports, uh, MLAT stations that I've synced with. And then in the middle, that's kind of the core of, of what you're, you're here to see. Uh, this is the live map readout, and this is basically the size of space that, that I'm getting picked up. So I am able to receive everything in that green kind of cloud there. So down, to, uh, down into Mexico and all the way north up into Visalia and Bakersfield and San Luis Obispo. But, you know, the airports that we're generally looking at are LAX, uh, Fullerton Airport, John Wayne Airport etc. And so you can see all the planes that are flying around. If you click on any one of them, you can update information for, okay, that's a Hawaiian Air. Uh, what kind of plane are they running? It's an Airbus A330 aircraft age five years. So it's pulling stuff off the internet about this particular aircraft. I can show the route for it. So there we go. We can see the place of origin, which is obviously Hawaii. If I take that off, Go ahead and reduce this down by filtering. So let's go ahead and close this guy. So I want to reduce airliners. I want to turn off business jets, uh, general aviation. Let's just do military. And we can zoom in here and see if there's any activity. There's no activity right now, but that's always really fun to, to pull those up. So let's turn off military. Actually, let's leave it on because there's nothing there anyway. And we'll go to unknown. Oh, we got one unknown plane. What is that? So we don't know what it is <laughs> uh, or what they're running, but we can basically follow where it started, which was in Oceanside. So it looks like, and it looks like it started in the middle of the ocean. So we're not sure exactly when I started picking him up, but that's the path he took when he came into my view. So he could have came out of John Wayne, which is down here. And that, that makes sense. Now I have to give you a bit of a backstory here. Obviously, this is not an amateur radio piece of kit. It is radio technology, so it's obviously in my wheelhouse. But for me specifically, my dad uh, was a Vietnam War veteran who was a crew chief of an A-7 Corsair, and they flew out of Karat, Thailand. Ever since he started with aircraft, even before the Vietnam War, I believe, and through to his retirement, he has been involved in commercial aircraft and before that obviously military aircraft. I as an extension being his son grew up around airplanes going to this is all before 9-11 uh, by the way going to the airport getting to see the inside working parts of planes. I've been all around an MD-80 back when he worked with uh, Jet America and later you know going to air shows and seeing all the military aircraft. I've always loved planes. I particularly like listening to VHF traffic, air traffic, and I have a couple of radios that allow me to do that. 
these are multi hundred dollar you know amateur radios that that allow that capability with this guy for about twenty dollars you can hook this up to an antenna that you stick outside your house by the way air nav they all sell the same they all sell the antennas that go with this and they're frequency specific so they're locked within a certain range or they're most effective as receiving antennas within a certain range of frequencies with one of these guys you pop it into your computer and boom you can run the software that is on their website and you can start listening to VHF traffic really easily and if I just wanted to listen to airband uh, just on the main page don't don't go to your home station unless you already are broadcasting mine needs to catch up or the system needs to catch up for the data that I'm pushing into it but if you click on airband then you can pretty much click on just about any country you want click on the United States for instance and then you, you've got a list of uh, different Miami Airport uh, New York approach you got all kinds of different options that show up here. So. found a better one so now it's Mexico City that a lot more activity. So like anything else, you got to jump around a little bit. Depends on the traffic that's going on. COVID might not be the best time <laughs> to do a lot of this because obviously there's less planes up, but you see a lot of them right now. That seems very clear. That station is local. That's a close station or they're up in a, in a, in a good location to pull up the audio that well. Right on. Now, ADSB is a bit more of a, an interesting animal. With ADSB, you can basically look up flight information. AirNav Radar Box does a really good job of that with their website based uh, user overlays that will show you the aircraft, the type of plane, the flight number, if it is a cargo plane, if it's a crew plane, you know, whatever's going on. It will cover military aircraft, it will do commercial, private uh, aviation. You name it, if it's transponding a code, it will get pulled up in the system and you can check it out. So what makes the AirNav Radar Box solutions pretty interesting is there are a couple of ways to receive the data. Obviously, you watching this, you're probably an amateur radio operator as you follow me. You can listen and, and pull the data out locally on your computer at home. You can do that. Uh, you can also upload the traffic to the AirNav Radar Box website, or it will auto update in the case of the X Range 2. That allows you to see many different airports, many different pieces of location on kind of like a Google Map type of display that will allow you to see everything that's going on in your area, which is really, really nice because you can basically jump around you can see the flight path of the plane that you're interested in and you can see it go you know around its destination based solely off of other boxes like this that you know companies or air traffic controllers or just private individuals have in their homes in their businesses that they receive data and upload to the system so it's really kind of a mesh receiver network for air traffic data and voice, which is pretty cool. Now, one of the nice things about the AirNav Radar Box uh, equipment is obviously they're small dongles and, and this box is a little big, but you know, everything's in it that you, you need to run on your home network. The antenna solutions they offer are small, generally because of the bands of operation. They're very innocuous and they pretty much turn invisible when you put them on the side of your house. I would recommend that you do put them outside you're gonna get the best reception that way. However, if you are an on-the-go type person or somebody that, um, that needs to be portable in how they set up, they do sell this little guy here, which is their X Mini Boost, which is actually a 1,090 megahertz receive antenna. This little tiny thing, you basically can connect anywhere. It connects to a little clip and you can strap it on the side. You can put it up against a hotel window or something like that relatively easily and and it works you know perfectly well for when you're on the go or you want just a real real inconspicuous solution maybe not this green you could put a piece of tape on it or something like that but that's a nice little option now most of the products that air nav radar box sells starts about twenty dollars and goes up from there around twenty dollars for the dongles but then there's a big jump. It's $299 for the range two or the X range two box. 
And that's primarily because it's a standalone computer device that runs all of the controls and uploads and network capability to getting in to their software solution. The cool thing about that is if you go with this box, you get a free subscription to their business level software. This allows you to pretty much see anything you want when you are on the AirNav Radar Box website. Remember, you can still run all of this locally. You can run the software locally. You can tunnel in directly for pulling the data off of these devices as you want to. And, and that's, that's great. It's a good option either way you want to go. This is like the serious side of the house. Uh, with this box and the antenna on the side of my house, I get a huge receiver range for 1,090 megahertz. Largely, it's to do with the antenna, but how this works and what it's doing really cool that I can pull that data out and take a look at it and, and literally watch the planes all over the place. It's really cool to be able to see the flights of different military planes come over and around going to Nellis or wherever they're going uh, up and down the coast and then inland as they as they shoot, shoot to the east. Uh, really fun. Again, specific kind of device for people that are interested in this aspect of radio receiving. Now there was a cool little, I'll leave you with this uh, little bit of detail. There was a really cool press release that AirNav Radarbox put out. When uh, the human malware virus hit, all the distributed devices like this one in and around the world, all that data was getting uh, collated and collected at their home servers. And you can watch basically the flight patterns change as you know uncertainty of the time and uncertainty of being able to travel kind of took effect. And it's, it's, it's interesting to see kind of the impact that uh, COVID has had on the country and, you know, flight travel in general. So, yeah, that's kind of the overview on what AirNav Radar Box is doing. I happen to leave this one on and connected to my home network all the time. I hop into the website. Like I said, I kind of just generally leave it up on one of my screens and let it run in the background. By the way, you can run it on your phone too. You can run it on your iPad. You can do all kinds of different stuff with it. It's a lot of fun if you are into this sort of thing. For those of you that are enthusiasts of amateur radio, you might want to check out the VHF airband receiver specifically for local voice comms. You'd be surprised the amount of VHF voice of just planes going overhead that you'll pick up and the information you can hear and listen to. It's always a lot of fun. So, Links will be in the description for where you can check them out. I am not affiliated with AirNav, but they did send me these products to take a look at. So keep that in mind as you make a decision to check these out. Anyway, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. If you enjoyed this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Check me out live streaming every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until you see me again, I'll talk to you later. See ya.